We're adding this section at the request of our students. Many have posed the intelligent question, how do I get from a DFD to requirements, user stories, features, or, or whatever I need to define the future application? There even used to be a great joke going around about DFDs showing the flow always ending in a process, and then a miracle occurs. This section is that much sought after miracle, or well, at least a step toward it. If you followed the course up to here, you have a beautiful data flow diagram. You may have created it to understand an existing process. You could also have created it to design a totally new digital product. Creating the diagram was fun and exciting because that forced you to ask the right questions of the domain experts. When you're drawn dying the diagram, both you and they have a picture of the transformation, transportation, and storage of data. If you did both vertical and horizontal balancing that I introduced in prior lectures, you also agree on the characteristics of that data as well as the individual business processes at the appropriate level of detail. Now, you might think that you're done, but creating the diagram was just the beginning. It optimally sets the stage for some serious workflow analysis. In this section, I introduce specific analysis techniques that you can use once you have a data flow diagram. Each technique focuses on a different perspective to reveal hidden processes or data anomalies. That lets you and your domain experts discuss potential or actual problems that need to be solved. The end goal of each technique is to flush out improvement opportunities. Whether you express those opportunities in the form of models, requirement statements, user stories, features, functions, scenarios, or any other form, depends entirely on your software development methodology. To be clear, I am not proposing that you use all of these techniques on every project. Only use a technique when it provides business value. To that end, I will also discuss when to use each technique. I'm sure some of you will uh, use some of the techniques more than others. You'll adapt your favorites to your style of thinking, and that is when you truly internalize them. Which to use and when to use it is up to you. These techniques ferret out hidden requirements whether you use them individually or in any combination. A DFD at the right level of detail gives you the superpower of visualization. To guide discussions with it, you can focus anyone's attention on a specific process, data flow, data store, or, or an external entity, simply by pointing at it. That simple technique enables three distinct types of analysis. Problem analysis identifies improvement opportunities based on the process flow and known problems. Use this if you're trying to optimize the overall throughput of a process. Timing analysis identifies anomalies in data quality, transportation, transformation, or storage. Use it if your group has difficulty recognizing the cause of intermittent delays and holdups. Exception analysis focuses on the handling of errors and exceptions by proposed solutions. Process improvement most often involves improving how errors and exceptions are resolved. Here's problem analysis step by step if you're using a data flow diagram. You pick a problem from your problem list that has already been analyzed, and you try to identify on the diagram where that problem is caused. Unfortunately, life is not simple. It's not uncommon that a problem has multiple potential causes and you don't know enough about the situation to recognize which ones are real until you do some serious analysis. Quite often, you might even have to start at the end, meaning you might have to start where the problem's been recognized and then backtrack to all of the potential causes of the problem. Given that you're looking at a data flow diagram as your tool for doing this, the cause of the problem might be located inside a process. Quite often, a problem's caused when the process is not performed correctly. If that's a possibility, what we're really going to do is just write the problem number on the diagram inside or close to the suspect process symbol that you're talking about. It may be inside a data store. Data problems are quite often caused when the available data is not current, it's not accurate, it's missing, it's contradictory because you've got you know, the same data from different sources and they are not aligned. If you feel the problem could be caused by bad data in a data store, write the problem number on the diagram inside or close to the suspected data store. 
It might be during transportation as the data is going from the source to the sink. If a problem is timing related in particular, it's quite often caused by the time it takes the data to get from the source to where it's going to be needed. In theory, data cannot change during transport because a data flow says it's data in motion. It's not doing anything. But if the data that is received is different than the data sent, you're dealing with a hidden process. That means there's actions taken during the transport that you don't have documented on your diagram. If there is a potential for a problem being caused by data in motion, write down the problem number on the diagram on or close to the data flow where you suspect it could be happening. Problems can also be caused by external entities. <laughs> because we're human, our first tendency is to seek the cause of the problems in other people or other groups. One of the secret powers of the data flow diagram is the presence of external entities. That almost invites people to blame them for causing the problem. After all, if the problem is caused by an external entity, it's not our problem. Now, that ominous they have to solve it for us. You need to combat this tendency by not allowing the group to assign a problem to an external entity until they have exhausted all potential internal causes. If there's still a possibility at that time that the cause is external, only them allow them to put the number of the problem onto the external. That serves as a reminder, really, that if you can't solve the problem internally, you may want to check with that entity, but don't do that until all internal causes have been identified and the problem is still there. If the group identifies a single point as the initial cause, they might have found the golden nugget. However, be aware of confirmation bias and make sure to challenge them to find whether or not it's not fool's gold you're looking at. Another piece of advice, don't allow the group to discuss solutions during this exercise. When they're doing this process, make them stick to it. Emphasize that in the ground rules for this type of a meeting. The purpose of problem analysis is to narrow down the potential causes of problems, not to solve them. Once the group agrees on all of the potential causes, someone might have to dig deeper to figure out where the problems really are, whether it's inside a process, a flow, or a data store. If you can confirm that the problem is caused there, then you can find solutions. Then you can discuss how to best solve the problem and eliminate all of those causes. Impatience is your enemy here. It can cause you to rush to define the solution to problems that don't exist. In the end, the real purpose behind this technique is to help the domain experts discover and discuss potential requirements, stories, features, functions, and so on. It can also reveal the need for additional non-functional requirements like controls or performance requirements or data quality needs and things like that. The purpose of this exercise is to find the cause first and then think about a solution that will eliminate it at all, in all of the different places it's caused or it could be caused but with the cheapest and simplest possible solution. That was what it's about, so let me give you a demonstration of how I think my way through this process.